And since it is biblical truths, and, and we throw a little science, but we throw a whole lot of scripture. First scripture should start at the beginning. Just like we start with a point, we start at the beginning of, of the authoritative text of our Lord and God. And it's Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. As a born-again Christian, as a saved Christian, as a follower, a disciple of Jesus Christ, that should be our position, that God created the heavens and the earth. Not NASA, not science, not Copernicus, none of that nonsense that came out of the, the 1600s and is taught on American universities today. So that's the first thing. As a Christian, we should believe what the Bible says. Amen? Amen. I hope so. So let's go to this real quick. The heliocentric model is taught, as I said, at universities. One of the first things, as you know, in kindergarten, when you take your children there, that globe is in that kindergarten class. It is promoted, pushed, it's taught. It does require math, science, and most of all, imagination. As Christians, we know the, the scripture, let God be true and every man a liar. All right. So from that point that we know it's going to be taught, of those three things, math is the least important in its most pure function with its addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. That's mathematics. Yet, it's leaned heavily upon as, as, as a supporting narrative to science. Science, you'll always hear these guys talking about, well, the math of this and the math of that and the Euclidean geometry and the non-Euclidean geometry, all of that. That's because science needs math, but math doesn't need science. Here's definitions. If you're taking notes on these things, this is desperately important to remember. If you get in a debate with someone, and defining terms. And obviously, what Bill just showed all of us there, they can't agree on what a point is. What a point is. How in the wide, wide world of the cosmos perspective are they ever going to be able to explain to a layman or anyone what the vast, endless universe is? And that's their point, right? Math describes, science explains, all right? I'll give, you, I'll, I'll give you a quick example. It took me a little bit to understand this. I have a blue shirt on, all right? Math describes the shirt. It has two pieces of, uh, it has two pieces of material that are stitched together here, a collar that's stitched around, one collar that's stitched around here. It has nine buttons all together. And then that mathematically describes my shirt. Science comes along and says, we need someone to take that material and stitch it together, then sew those buttons on. And when all of that is done, I have a tangible shirt that came from tangible buttons, tangible cloth, and they explain how the shirt was made. Does that make sense? Okay. I hope so. <laughs> the only difference between my shirt and the vast universe is the more the talk, the more confusing it gets. And that's their goal. The third requirement for the acceptance of the heliocentric model is the single most important, and that is your imagination. As you listen to these guys when they do, do a TED talk or a university talk or on the tube of you, if you're, you're listening to seminars or presentations and, you know, these science knobs just they eat all that stuff up. Well, for those of us who also listen to them, you'll find that inevitably, in their first, normally their first 30 seconds, they're asking you to use your imagination. It's our ability to dream. It, it is within the world of, of imagination and all possibilities exist for the cosmic exploration of galaxies and supernovas and all that. They're, 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 not, they're begging, they're asking, they're demanding that you use your imagination. And that's where they sell you the dream. That's where they sell you the dream. I don't need you to use your imagination to show you, to describe how the shirt is made or to, to, to explain to you how the shirt is made. I don't need your imagination. You know why that is? Here's the lesson. Here's the biblical lesson of day one, February one of the 29 days of truth, discovering God's static bread of realm. The Lord tells us to be still and trust in him. Be still and trust in him. 
And when we do that, when we do that, if we do that, then all things will be added. And that works. That absolutely works. Satan tells us the exact opposite. And the imagination, the mind, is Satan's playground. That's why God also tells us to capture every thought. That you capture every thought. And don't move those thoughts that come in from Satan and your imagination into your heart, into your actions, into your own being. It doesn't make any sense. We trust in the Lord. That's what we do. And then all things will be added then we praise and worship and are thankful for what he has added to us because we didn't go to another man for that information. We went to him. And that's what, as born-again Christians, as saved Christians, as disciples of Jesus Christ, that's what we should be doing. Okay? Keep this thought in mind, too. Math and science are verbs. They're verbs. One describes and one explains. That's it. As soon as you start turning math and science into nouns, trouble big, big trouble. Today was the point. Tomorrow is time. And then day three, the third of February, will be space. But I'll give you a little tease of that too. Time is a concept. When I was researching uh, biblical scripture for, for the definition of time, time is God's. The only reason we think that time can be a tangible is because we mark time. We have a wristwatch, we have uh, a calendar, we have birth dates, we have celebrated events that we mark on a calendar. But that's not time. That's a measurement of time. The Bible tells us a year is a, a day is a thousand years to the Lord. And vice versa. Time is His. It's not ours. It is definitely not ours. We can mark it in the most simplistic fundamental ways by the sun coming for 12 hours then the night coming for 12 hours and that is a day by whose rules not sciences not math gods 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 two big lights but i'm getting ahead of myself but i i hope you get the point i hope you get the point all right so science tells us how it's made math what it what it looks like that was the old shirt analogy all right i'm getting way ahead of myself i hope you enjoyed uh, the presentation today with bill gaddy uh some of these are going to be short some of these are going to be long since this is the first one here today uh, and you notice something too in regards to february 2nd which will be on uh, time i did this one on january 29th on february 1st am i a time traveler According to NASA and science, I guess I am. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm a humble, faithful servant of God. And I thank God every day for that. Thanks for joining in to Saints. And uh, God bless you all. God bless you all. Here's a young lady who's gonna, we're going to close with today who uh, is going to make you think, too. Peace, love, fisherman. The mystery schools viewed atheists as completely unable to learn their secrets. Occultists believe that knowledge should be hidden and held by a select few. Satanists, Luciferians, dark occultists, and light occultists are like ancient psychologists who hold and wield information to exploit those who remain ignorant of it. The globe is mental insurance that there is no creator. However, there is no creator but Lucifer. Since he created this world, if the earth is flat, Yahweh God told the truth. That is why I feel like this topic is a salvation issue, even though those who claim to call themselves Christian often argue that it is not. It comes down to who do you believe, man or God? There are two worlds, two versions of reality, the globe and all within it, the flat earth and all within it. I've always thought of flat earth to be like an eject button from the matrix, the fastest form of the red pill. Because once you're free from the globe, almost all of their lies begin to fall apart. To me, what the globe is, is showing you that this is Lucifer's world. He can't show you it's flat. He didn't create that. After all, there is no truth found in him. So the people who believe in the globe and love things in the globe matrix are his, in his world. After all, Lucifer's highest goal is to become God. 
And when your entire world is based on his lies, he is your God. 